know how to f***ing start this one. Uh, guys, we just got back from uh, Captain Marvel and uh, the the latest uh, in the Marvel Studios film, um, setting up Avengers Endgame. Well, not really. Uh, it's it just it's basically. Uh, the origin story for Captain Marvel, who we will see in Avengers Endgame. Now, uh, I'll address it right away. We'll talk about some of the stuff surrounding uh, the film before it released. Some of the, uh, you know. No, I don't want to yes, talk about we got, that. Yes, we're going to do it. I don't know much about that. I try to disconnect myself from the film and that. You're on Twitter. Right. So. Because what's important to us is how good is the film. Uh, but, we'll, but I will address some of that in the spoiler section. What we're interested in is how was the actual film? How's the actual film, guys? I actually rather enjoyed this one. Yeah. I okay. thought I was supposed to not like this. Yeah. And Why? Because you're a white man? You're I a mean, white male? what? Yo, white <laughs> what do you mean you're, su you're supposed to? <laughs> there was, what? There was so much crap on the internet. <laughs> it's like, oh, you, you, you know, no one's going to like this film. And, you know, like no one wants to see yeah, it. It's getting but downvoted I, on IMDb. Yeah. A lot of one out of tens. It's Clearly, this is a one out of ten. Of yeah. It's not excellent. It's <laughs> right. not great. It was but enjoyable. It was pretty yeah. good, and I enjoyed it. It was not uh, a ten out of ten either. No. Uh, this film sort of comes. Uh, it does. It's a blast from the past. You know, in more yeah, ways than one. they try to get you with that nostalgia feel. Mm. They did give you some nostalgia. We got some blockbuster video. All the songs, the soundtrack in the film evoke that, uh, you know, feeling of the 90s, uh, heavily slant towards, uh, you know, uh, female artists, I think. Uh, and uh, it's really uh, – but, but what's funny about that is that this one kind of goes back to some of the problems that other Marvel films have had. Uh, and at least in my opinion, a little weak villain, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, somewhat. And in this case, a little bit messy plot, the way they paced this, yeah. the way they organized it mm -hmm. kind of it didn't necessarily confuse me, but it more sort of disconnected me. I, I, I feel like I, I wasn't flowing right. Yeah. Um, but when it would get going, when it was firing on all cylinders, I thought it was a ton of fun um, and really, uh, you know, Visually impressive. What do you think about the CGI? Oh man, Sam Jackson looked amazing. Right. Yeah. I, I don't think I've ever seen better de aging CGI than this film. Mm -hmm. Like you literally forget that Sam Jackson is not that young looking. Agent Colston it, it works a little less than Sam, mm -hmm. but it's still really good. Yeah. And like you you it's don't top know, notch. Top notch mm -hmm. stuff. Which is scary, man, because now they can do anything <laughs> they want and it should look good, right? Um yeah. So Let's talk about, obviously, our star, uh, Brie Larson. How do you think that she did as Captain Marvel or Marvel? I thought she did a fine job at it. Um, very stoic. Uh, not, a, not a lot of emotion, mm -hmm. but I guess she's like a, supposed to be like a soldier or uh -huh. whatnot. Well, I'm going to disagree with you, Joe. I, I, I went in thinking that, the, that she'd be pretty stoic, right, because a lot of the Internet was like, you need to smile more. Why? And we even Why? said it. Yeah. That we, we even said it ourselves. We noticed some of it in the trailer that they picked a lot of the serious scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you go into the film, there's, there's playfulness. She cracks jokes. Uh, she smiles a ton. Uh, and, and I think it more comes from the fact that she's a soldier. She's a trained soldier. And and there's a plot element of her state of mind, uh, w you know, that we could talk about in spoilers. And all these things come together that sort of gives you a reason for, I think, her behavior, um, the look that she's giving um, and, and things like that. What did you think, Alex? Yeah, I think I didn't have a problem with her her portrayal of Carol Danvers at all. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, she was serious a lot of the time. I think that. This movie's hard to kind of judge how she did because, like, the first act, in my opinion, was great. And then we get into, like, there's a lot of slowness in the second mm. and third act. And then the fourth act, maybe towards the end of the fourth act, it really picks back up. And I was really engaged mm. at the very beginning and at the very end. And in the middle, there's a lot of time where I'm just kind of, like, looking around and going, okay, well, yeah. they're developing the, the plot, but I'm not paying any attention yeah, to really her. you're really invested. And invested yeah. in the characters. Uh, what really worked was the sort of buddy cop, uh, you know, kind of dynamic between Samuel L. Jackson and Brie Larson. Great job, as always, by Samuel. <laughs> <laughs> I really didn't think, I mean, it's kind of obvious from the film that he's going to be in it a lot, but I didn't expect him to, 
you know, be such a, he's a main character, right? He's yeah. got just as much screen time practically. And I'm really thankful that for that because this man is in a lot of movies. He's <laughs> yeah. the, one of the, he is, if not the highest paid he's actor in Hollywood, and there's a reason for it. He's a legend and it's just enjoyable uh, to see him uh, do his thing and play off Brie Larson, who is an alien from another planet uh, and, and how he accepts that. And, uh, you know, what did you think about the fish out of water? Uh, type of stuff. Me personally, I thought that that kind of stuff was done much better in Wonder Woman. Uh, mm -hmm. But it, I guess they were trying to approach it from a different angle. She's supposed to be a soldier. But wait a minute. Wonder Woman was also a soul wa warrior. So I don't know. What do you think about the fish out of water stuff? I I think that's part of the problem with I mean, as they as they introduce her to Earth and she spent some time there, I wasn't kind of jiving with that part of the story. Mm -hmm. I didn't like it as much as when she had a purpose in the very beginning and she was very good with her purpose. And at the end, she also had a purpose again and it made a lot of sense. And in the middle, that's kind of the slowest part of the movie for me. So I don't know if I didn't like that aspect of the story or if I didn't like that aspect of the movie, like that mm -hmm. period of the movie. There's uh, I, I think the, in the plot hinges – um, God, I'm going to have to save that for the spoiler section, but there is a surprise in the film, uh, and one that I thought was well done, uh, you know, one that I didn't necessarily see coming, though I did, I did see several things coming, and I think that might be, aside from this one sort of twist, uh, another problem of the film could be the fact that it's, it's, it's kind of predictable. Yes. yes. Uh, really by the numbers. Uh, you, you, you started to even get some some stereotypical one-liners. But I think maybe that might have been a little bit more of a throwback to the 90s kind of style, you know, like... Uh, oh, I don't know. That's what I'm talking about! Uh, <laughs> you know, there's the, some one-liners here and there. Uh, I was I was actually expecting more from Agent Colston. You know, I had heard rumors that he was going to be, you know, he's going to be a big fan of, like, MC Hammer. And so he I was said, like, like so three things in this whole Yeah, film. yeah, yeah. And he, so he wasn't really there much. Uh, so I was a little disappointed by that. But in terms of uh, the a female-led superhero film in the Marvel Universe, do you think that this is a success? Now, obviously, Black Widow is a part of the universe. You have Scarlet Witch. Um, but... N not one that where she's the main character and the center of attention in her own uh, vehicle film. Do you think that uh, this is a, a win? I think it's a good step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like the best movie. Mm -hmm. I mean, the direct comparisons are this versus Wonder Woman. Yeah, yeah. I think I think, I think e despite the last better. couple minutes of Wonder Woman that I really yeah that uh, third act. The more really I watch Wonder Woman, you guys know I love Wonder Woman. She's my third favorite superhero. That just third act of Wonder Woman is that so bad. That last fight is so bad. So bad. But everything up until that point is so, so good. good. Yeah. And it's like comparing Captain Marvel to Wonder Woman. I think Wonder Woman wins. In this oh, fight. yeah. This oh, is yeah. the one oh, yeah. time where oh, yeah. DC yeah. did it better. Yeah. The one time <laughs> ever. Like ever, right? <laughs> yeah, they, animation? They, they've done some good stuff Besides in the animation. past. Uh, okay. Yes, yeah, so no. the original Superman uh, films, the obviously the Dark Knight. Come I don't on. consider those. Come on. I don't, those you're talking about the extended universe from Snyder. Well, guess what? Snyder's gone, all right? So anyways, <laughs> bringing this back on topic, Wonder Woman, we think, probably is a little bit superior of a film. However, they really do show how powerful uh, Carol Danvers is in her role as Captain Marvel. I do believe she's super powerful. Powerful. In fact, I, I think I think maybe by the time she gets her power, she's just like so much more powerful than everything else. It sort of drains some of the tension and the excitement yeah, from you some just of the battles. Like, oh, just go kick some ass. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so this guy, this guy thinks that a character that's like too insanely powerful for no reason is like, isn't like Superman your I knew favorite? I you were gonna say that. I knew. Never mind. But. It's kryptonite. Really oh. awesome. You are so low intelligence, Alex. <laughs> yep. you, that that was just low hanging fruit, and I knew he'd go for it. Yep. I'm glad he went for it because I'm prepared and I'm ready oh. for it. Oh, okay. Because been reading in, up, son. <laughs> in Man of Steel, in many of the Superman stories, he's either depowered or he's fighting galactic threats that are on par with his power level. If you notice, Superman is not a soldier. He's not a war warrior. He's basically really rookie with all of his powers. Mm -hmm. By the time Zod comes to Earth with his army he of 40, 40 Superman. Billy Blanks. He put in Billy Blanks tapes. And oh, that's he why. did a typo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's why you have the tension still there. 40 
supermen that are more powerful and better trained goes to his farmhouse to fuck with his mom and his family and he's like don't you ever touch my mother and then he gets that that family protecting strength that's mm-hmm. right fucking i love man of steel anyway i knew somebody was gonna say but that but you don't but think she's gonna do that with thanos no, and okay like- well no she better not see that's the thing you cannot introduce she's gonna lose everybody right now she has me yeah, I was oh. expecting to fully hate her, you know, or just, you know, feel like she's an outsider because mm-hmm. she's literally the last one to show up right before the epic thing. Mm-hmm. And they want to make her more powerful than Thor. They want to make her more powerful than Hulk. They want to make her more powerful than everybody else that we've known. And I'm a big proponent of earning that and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But, yes, sure, in the comics, she is very powerful. Yeah. She's supposed to be that way. But will she earn it? So in this film, I didn't feel like she really – earned it very much yeah and so i'm hoping that when they do go to avengers endgame that she goes up to thanos and thanos just knocks her ass out Mm -hmm. because literally thanos has the infinity gauntlet all fucking gems she shouldn't come in there and knock him you know and just finish this fight and we're done tons of events because then that would Mm -hmm. but i don't think marvel's that stupid guys so i don't think there's a reason uh, to hate on her just because she's going to show up at the last minute and she's going to overshadow all the Avengers characters. It's a legitimate gripe because oh, we've, sure. we've spent years and years with these characters. Um, and I don't think they did that. And and you will see a mid credit scene. You will see a post credit scene that we could talk about in the spoiler section. But to me, it, it, it kind of puts that fear to rest. I don't think that that's what's going to happen. And I think that hopefully she does earn her place uh, you know, in the Avengers Endgame. But as a film, I, I think I you know you take out <laughs> all the the troll ratings of one. You take out all the counteracting it's ratings of one. ten. It's, not it's a definitely 10. not a ten. It's not no. a ten. It's not a ten by any means. It's not a one. We have seen one out of tens, <laughs> especially in Joe. <laughs> this is not that. Okay, and so. I guess the internet is kind of doing its job because if you look at the rest uh. of it, it's kind of hanging around eight and seven. Um, so let's go to final verdicts. And uh, wh- what would you rate this film, Alex? I'm going to start with Alex. I think this is a solid seven for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to – it's really well, hard to – lost some of those points? It's hard to divorce, like – and, and treat this movie as an independent movie. I mean, this is the twenty-something right. installment of the Marvel universe. Yeah, we're looking at nineteen. We have some maybe 20, big, big titles that have come before it. I mean, I loved Infinity Wars, and I love Ragnarok. Ooh, and Thor like, Ragnarok. And so you you come off some of these, of and you come down to mm-hmm. like Ant Man two, and then this, and are those of the same caliber? No. no. So they're not Neither nines. Thor that, one and two. Well, absolutely. Those <laughs> were, <laughs> Thor one, especially. But that that disqualifies this from being like a nine and a 10 because we have these direct comparisons that's really hard to separate this film from all those other films Mm -hmm. and so this movie if it had if it didn't have the pacing problems i think in the second and third act where it kind of it didn't i was satisfied with the film and Mm -hmm. i enjoyed it almost every step of the way but i definitely recognized like there was some slowness in the middle of this film and it sags it definitely sags. it definitely sags in the in in the middle of the film and so i think that this is a good film at a seven out of ten but it's not a great film at, at for an eight joe ah, i'm kind of stuck between a six or seven uh Ooh, yeah because like, be slightly above average the other supporting characters didn't really matter to me they mm-hmm. didn't really play a big you didn't role. like ben mendelson he was so good he was good i i i, well, I, I was did talking about what, like the rambo one rambo that's her one. name right Oh, I see. What oh, you're photon. Saying. The team. Yeah. Photon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the yeah, Cree team that she's with. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're yeah. basically background shit. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the plot was kind of iffy on me. There was, like, not a lot of threat level. You're just mm-hmm. there to have fun. It's, like, great action scenes and everything. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, I know it's going to happen, but it's by the books. And I just didn't really feel any tension like the other movies. I like to be like, oh, is she going to make it out alive? What's going on? It's like. Yeah. There's nothing, none, none of that for me. Mm-hmm. And none of her politics is, is 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 coming into these these ratings for you guys. Uh, like I said, I don't. I'm not don't on Twitter or do <laughs> any of that other stuff. So it's like I don't read that. any of those things. Like I, I get I'm all the that. one that has to read all that. Yeah. And I'm mad of uh, a certain outcome that happened. Okay. We talk about okay. We will. Yes, right. we will I absolutely was, talk about it. About that. I'm trying to so, separate that from. <laughs> All right, so I, th- I, th- I think I'm gonna go with this. 
six. Oh. Silver six. Wow. Okay. Above, that's above average. Yeah. That's it good. is above average. You have to remember our scale is a little harder on movies, and you know we five is we got average we got film. railed. Y'all got railed. I mean, all the blame went to me, but really, y'all were the ones that rated Attila oh. Battle Angel even lower than I. I did. mean, like Metacritic and Rotten Tomatoes, and literally action. every well, other reviewer. All the hoity-toity critics that everybody should ignore. Yeah. Not a teen and then, drama. But, <laughs> but you know, we aren't critics. We're just guys that watch a movie right after the film. So. But we got lumped in with all the, those, even they though we should had be ashamed the, of that movie. We had the same opinion. No, <laughs> they had it wasn't fifteen the- years to do it justice, and they didn't. Okay, well, <laughs> I, I disagree. I think uh, they got a lot of it right. Anyway, so um, this was a tough one. I mean, it's gonna be damned if I do, damned if I don't. Whatever I say, oh, yeah. uh, you're gonna get uh, crucified Captain on Marvel. the internet anyway. But you know what? I, I, a divorce from the internet, divorce from all the comments, divorce from her politics. And honestly, I think some of the things that she said was incredibly stupid, but it came from a place of wanting to do good. You know, our ultimate, and we'll talk about that in spoilers. But so the final verdict for the film for me is going to be a 7 out of 10. And I think that's because I think there's weakness in the pacing, in the plot, in the villains, and this film after. Okay, Marvel is having to innovate. By by the 17th, 18th, 19th film. And you've got some really great stuff coming out, as Alex pointed out. It's really stylish stuff, like Thor Ragnarok. And then this comes around. It's really by the numbers. It's, it's, it's pleasing. It is a crowd pleaser. Mm-hmm. It's one of those popcorn movies that you will in, you'll get invested in mm-hmm. it. You're looking for a hero. But there's really not much that's going to surprise you. It, without this small twist in it, I probably would have rated it a six. But because a twist sort of happens, and I and I say, oh, that's kind of a cool take on this. Um, I'm going to end up at a seven out of ten. So I think it's it's slightly better. It's a good film, and it's one that you should see. But realize that this is completely a side story uh, within the greater whole of what's happening right now. The Infinity War, End Game. They were screwed no matter what they did, right? Because this is this comes one month before End Game, mm-hmm. like. No matter what they release here, they were it was ne- it was going to be held to the same standard that which infin- is so yeah you're right it's you're very so right. rough it's it a is good very filler, rough. but it's, it's unfair it's filler it is it is decent Super filler good. but it is yeah. not a great I don't know film. if I'd call it filler because there are you know this is an origin well, story everybody's waiting you for have the to ending. have everybody's waiting for that so I he's know. just like hey just watch this but you have to have an origin story for this character if it's going to play a very important part but in and I kind of don't want it to play like a really imp- like I mm-hmm. I want Captain Marvel to play a part in Endgame but she I don't She does feel like she's showing up late like Girl, where you been for 20 years? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> what the hell? The Chitauri were coming down, and we're going to kill literally everyone in New York. And where were you? Well, but that was that was uh, Fury's fault. Anyway. What? what? Uh, we'll talk about it in the spoilers. Okay. So 7 out of 10, guys, divorced from all the, the Internet stuff, and we can talk about that uh, here in the spoiler section. If not, thank you very much for watching, and we will see you on the next Angry Joe Show. Bye, guys. Do you think uh, now that she is like a, a hero for young girls to look up to, do you think that she will be uh, what the writers themselves had said is a feminist icon, a good female hero? Do you, do you think do you believe in all that? I mean, if you look at the shirt that I'm wearing, I mean, you've got an example of a really good, you know, female hero. My favorite movie of all time. <laughs> If you can, you do you even know what this is, Joe? Yes. Mm-hmm. What is it? Aliens. Aliens. Very good. Yeah. Very good. I got it. <laughs> she's not. To me, she's not one that's like stands the test of time in the sense where it just feels very throwaway, very popcorny, very like you know, hey, let's and, and then we're gone, we're done. You know what I mean? I don't think it's for me to to say. I mean, it's not. I mean, if you're looking at a movie for that specific purpose, it's it's not for me to decide what young girls should look look up to, and if that's yeah, what they want to look up to, ones, amazing. And if they don't. That's their choice, but it has nothing to do with me as like an old white guy. So <laughs> I, I'm just gonna say that I, I I can like or dislike the film based on my own parameters, yeah, yeah. and I'm not gonna try to step in and just say that this is who girls of any age it's, should look up to. If they do, wonderful. Mm-hmm. If they don't, 
I don't care because it has no impact on me whatsoever. It's a great point. It's a great point. But it, it is something that the writers intended to do, For, something yeah. that they are intending to, to try to get across, and they've stated that as much. And so I'm giving my perspective, which apparently doesn't matter to you know some people. But my perspective is she's good. She's powerful. She stands up for herself. But I just so does Black Widow. So does Scarlet Witch. It's it's true, but I, I do, I'm not sure if it'll stand the test of time. We'll have to see. I think that she probably needs another film to flesh her out. It seems that so much of it was spent. Well, we'll talk about it in spoilers. But so much of it was spent. This is spoilers. This is the spoilers. I yeah, didn't even no. introduce the spoiler section. Fine, I'll make this the spoiler okay. section. Um, and and so much of the time was spent on her being brainwashed uh, by the Cree that we didn't really get to see the real Carol Danvers. And we when we see yeah, the real the Carol flashes. Danvers, we see flashes of her personality, but also way out of order and stuff like that. So I, I think that we'll probably see the real Carol Danvers in uh, Avengers Endgame. I'm looking forward to that. So, uh, what was the big twist? The scroll. Yeah, the they're scroll. They're actually the good guys. They're just trying to find a home. They're just refugees. Sort of. They are refugees. I thought that was good because the scroll in the comics uh, started the Secret War. It was one of the most bloodiest and, uh, you know, um, where the villains really kick some major ass against the, the heroes in the comic storyline. Uh, they've made an, a massive invasion on Earth, and then they all reveal themselves, and everybody's screwed. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, but in here, they're not the bad guys. They play off that very, very well. It turns out that the Kree race, which, you know, are traditionally viewed as the good guys, lots of technology, fighting the good fight against these, these evil scroll, they're actually the ones that are the power hungry, that are the sort of empire uh, order, you know, and they want to pretty much wipe out the scroll for whatever reason. Now, does it leave the door open for the scrolls to be evil in the future? Maybe. I mean, maybe... Uh, this little kid's father, who we saw in the film, this Ben Mendelsohn's character, could get killed, and the kid could be like, "Well, I'm ta fuck this. I'm I'm gonna attack the Kree." So there's still that opportunity for those of you who really, really want to see the the scroll do their thing like they did in the comics. But here they That's are what used I wanted. as a sympathetic <laughs> uh, characters, and they play off that well with a lot of humor. Mm -hmm. And I th I thought it was well done. Yeah. It was kind of it was almost jarring once they kind of revealed who they were because their methods were so. They were kind of portrayed as like violent all mm -hmm. the way up to the point where they're just like, oh, just kidding. We're the we're the good guys. And this is my buddy science <laughs> officer. And he's like he's wacky and everything. <laughs> zany. It's like, didn't you just try to kill me like seven <laughs> times and you killed all of those other people? Well, but you know, uh, speaking of you got a good point there, but I think that's actually the way it really would be. Because, I oh mean, yeah. these people are conditioned to fight each other. And when she first lands on the planet and one of the scrolls sees her, they just, she just opens fire on her. Mm -hmm. They're just trained to do that. You know, they don't realize that uh, she's going to end up being the one to help them find their own planet and, and find the core. So the core is actually the Tesseract. It is revealed. And the Tesseract uh, was, you know, and her mentor, you know, wasn't really Jude Law. It was a... Um, and at Benning. And at Benning, uh, and she was some uh, a Cree who had uh, Larson, sort of Doctor Larson. Yeah, took refu uh, refuge on Earth and mm -hmm. took a bunch of scrolls with her, uh, so she could find a new new place for them to live. Um, and she had super advanced technology. So well, she had the Tesseract. She was mm -hmm. doing all sorts of cool experiments with it. Yeah. So, uh, but she was able to build some kind of core, and this is the confusing part for me. Because Carol is so powerful, I want a good explanation to her powers. I thought they were going to do something with, like, uh, she shares in the Infinity Stone's power, but it's not really that. It's just an engine explodes, and all of a sudden she's the most powerful Marvel hero. Well, they she said th some th of that the, the, the engine was powered by the, tes the yeah. core, which was mm -hmm. the Tesseract, and so when it explodes, she absorbs its power, and maybe it's the Infinity mm -hmm. Stone's power. Or yeah. There's a lot of hand-waving. She's like, she's powerful now. Get over yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> So there's a little <laughs> bit of a disconnect there. All the writers saying that she's the most powerful. Do you think some of that is because they're like, you know, we really need to pump up the, the, the woman, the, the female angle, because, you know, she's going to get a lot of criticism. Is she a victim? Is she going to need saving? And they, they sort of overwent on that angle because if she is a piece of one of the Infinity Stones or through transference, then she would be weaker than Vision, who is literally a, a Infinity Stone, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we've seen Thor take a fucking dying star to the chest. Um, 
so if they were trying to position her as the most powerful Marvel hero, I don't think it came through quite well. But maybe that wasn't their she was intention. just also like maybe really, that was just hype. She just like discovered her powers. Like we saw, yeah, true. We, we saw thirty minutes of her at like fully unleashed. So maybe mm-hmm. she gets more and more powerful. She does learn flight like almost immediately. She's falling through the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, because she doesn't know how to fly, and then she just sort of concentrates, opens her eyes, and they're glowing, and she's able to yeah. fly. Yeah. I don't have – I mean, we'll have to see how they portray her in Endgame, but she doesn't have to come in as the most powerful. She could just be the missing piece Well, with they've already spoiled that. because, And that was one the, – the, the credit where I was like, okay, well, they're not going to approach it the way they thought. The way I thought they were going to do it, which would could have been – uh, amazing for fans of Captain Marvel, but probably a little annoying for me is that everybody gets their ass kicked and then she shows up, beats the fuck out of Thanos, or she's like flying above that's him and what, beats yeah, That's his what ass. I don't want. I don't right, right. Want but that's Justice not what's going to happen because she's was already there. Yeah, because that she, was horrible in Justice League whenever right. Superman just came in and Steppenwolf and just destroyed everything. I was like, okay, well, what's the... That was well, that was, I think, intentional in the sense that that's supposed to be his his lackey, his but lieutenant. Still, that's on. not Dark Side, Joe. Well, yeah, I know. And that. we know that he's not as powerful as Superman. But when you're positioning but somebody still, to be more Aquaman, powerful than Thanos, Aquaman's just like pretty much in par with Superman. No, so he yeah, not, not, no, yeah, he is. No, he's not. He's got super strength. And he's everything. not. He's not on par with Superman. He's he's a little bit on a lower tier. But well, he, he should have been whooping to some ass too. With yeah, no, woman. that's true. But why are we talking about Justice League? Because now you're gonna get me on the sense that <laughs> you're right. Well, Aquaman was that's, done dirty in Justice League. That's basically what I don't. He was want. getting his ass kicked that the whole fucking time. Is not what I want for Thanos. Okay, that's that's, that's what you're saying. My point. That, that Thor is going to get knocked around like Aquaman is going to get knocked around. Then Superman or vis-a-vis Captain Marvel shows up and ends the fight. Yeah. No, clearly that's not what's happening because the cutscene showed they had the beeper. The beeper stopped. Why? Because, boom, she's right behind them. What have you done with Nick Fury? Or she, I think she just she's calls like, him. But that, is Nick Fury? that doesn't explain, like, her just power level in that movie. Like, she... No, what I'm saying is that she's not going to be floating or, or saving anyone because they've already revealed it there unless this is somehow after this is like they tricked us and this is a mid scene in end game and not the beginning the first time they see her. But that wouldn't make any sense because she right, she's very distrustful of them. She doesn't know them. Mm-hmm. So that's probably the first time that she's seen them and the yeah. first time she's Yeah, but them. we don't know her relative power level in end game yet. We okay. know that she shows up, but we don't know sure. that and she's she going to show up and just be like snap her fingers and he's like fans well, years to harness her new power, so yeah. we shall see. <laughs> no, I, I'm telling you she doesn't have enough power. I mean, it's the infinity gauntlet. And if she, if her powers are derived from one of the, if from one of the gems, then she's gonna get her ass fucking kicked. I mean, if if the Infinity Gauntlet works the way it is supposed to work in the comics, I don't know. Very <laughs> excited, very excited to see oh, how yeah. the hell, how the hell do you fight this guy? It's really great. It's really. They good. better not just make him sad. <laughs> if they make it that's like Thanos is sad, I'm gonna be really <laughs> I'm upset. Sad. Yeah, he just that turns he into like daughter. a big intergalactic Eeyore. Where he's like, I, I don't want this today, and he just like takes off the gauntlet, and they beat his ass, and then yeah. everything's over. It's like, oh great, I love yeah. this. Yeah, he's like, no, don't do that. My greatest weakness was depression. <laughs> so I, I promised that I'd cover it a little bit. I just want to you know comb over it uh, because enough has been said on it. I don't really want to give it too much precedent precedence, but um, you know, you you have several people that want to see the film fail and, and that feel threatened by, you know, Brie Larson, per, particularly her politics. But- Inclusive Initiative released findings that 67% of the top critics reviewing the 100 highest grossing movies in 2017 were white males. Less than a quarter were white women and less than 10% were re- unrepresented men. Only 2.5% of those top critics were women of color. But I think that she has good heart, good intentions, and if you really look at her exact words, she's, she's constantly sort of qualifying it. Other people besides white dudes like Star Wars and would love the opportunity to do a set visit. And I'm also saying I don't hate white dudes. I'm just saying we need to be conscious of our bias and do our part to make sure that everyone is in the room. She said two stupid things like, I don't care what a white male has to say about what dreams, or what, what, not what dreams may come. That was actually a good film. But what was the other one? The Disney one with oh, Oprah. 
uh, Wrinkle in Time. Wrinkle in Time. She's like, I don't care what criti- you know a white man has to say about that film because it wasn't made for you. you know? I do not need a 40-year-old white dude to tell me what didn't work for him about A Wrinkle in Time. It wasn't made for him. I want to know what that film meant to women of color, to biracial women, to teen women of color, to teens that are biracial. And for the third time, I don't hate white dudes. You know, but that's not how, you know, film criticism works. So she said, did say some stupid stuff. And then also... Who doesn't? <laughs> who doesn't say... That's what, I'm, that's what I'm trying to say is that, you know, uh, I think the intention is not n- literally, you know, something very negative. So if you're one of those that really hates Brie Larson and thinks she's some kind of, um, you know person out to get you i don't think that's the case i just think she was maybe a little too far in, in, in her own world or an echo chamber but she had good intentions there so i, I give her a break so i gave her a, i gave her a break on this and when i'm watching a movie i don't really you know focus too much i don't care on about the politics at all exactly i don't involved. focus too much on the actors outside of the film it's like how good of a job are you doing at that particular character and to me she did seem stoic but i excuse that because her character is stoic. She is a soldier. She is a trained killer. Um, she's like an elite force. Um, and and she on, obviously, she does a lot of jokes. She does a lot of palling around with the people that she cares about or feels close to in the film and then forms bonds with other people. So I thought she did all right. I think that she's a good actress. And by the end, yes, she was a little uh, sort of dull at times, maybe a little boring, you could say. Uh, but I, I think that it's laid the foundation for her going to be you know, able to really open up in the next film and show us her a lot more of her personality. I hope so. Yeah. I don't want her to come in and just win. So what about the cat? So I'm, I don't know why I'm upset about this cat. The, they changed the name. I liked the name Chewy. And they just arbitrarily changed the name to Goose. I have to get that out of there. It's fucking annoying me because it's always been Chewy in the comics. And I thought, oh, this is cool. Disney owns Star Wars. Disney owns Marvel. It could be Chewy. I was going to say copyright. I was like, wait, no. No, it's, yeah, it's, it could be Chewy to Chewbacca. No, they just changed it to Goose. Like, I hate it when people just change the small things. It didn't matter. Yes, it doesn't matter <laughs> because Goose in off. because <laughs> Goose in the film was funny. I like the cat. What? The cat pissed you off? Yes. Well, what do you mean? Yeah. Y'all didn't like the cat? I love the cat. fine but, until that one scene. Well, we're in the spoiler <laughs> section. Like, yes. it, it, this reminds me a lot of Solo where they trivialize something that you didn't know that – when someone trivializes, you're like you're gonna be upset, and they're like, "Oh, by the way, Nick Fury doesn't have an eyeball because a cat oh. scratched him once." And oh. you're like, "Oh, Come what? On. That's, yeah, that's what happened. That's what happened." Like at the Come very man. end, I'm like, I'm like, "Honestly, I was waiting. I was like, how how is it gonna happen? Because they tease it. Happen? Well, like, they, oh, they something tease else. Yeah, hits something him in the hits eye. him, and he's like, "How's your eye?" I was like, "Oh, it's fine. It's, it's fine. fine." I was like, "He's gonna lose it." And yeah, then pretty much at the very end. Scratches the cat, and it was completely him. out of character because the cat has shown a affinity for him. But I guess it's really, also a space alien monster thing. But I guess really it is in character for cats because they are kind of like the assholes sometimes. But wait, it's not a cat; it's a flurg flurgan. I don't know what the fuck. Something uh, like that. <laughs> tentacle <laughs> monster. Uh, yeah, I thought that was a lame way to give uh, Nick Fury his eye. That's canon now. Well, That's I don't forever. know. I don't know how it was taken out in the comics, but I'm pretty sure it was much cooler than that. And if it was that cat that did it, I wow. Hasselhoff would he never better, have lost an eye in that man. He better he better keep it a secret as he does and as they he joke does. about in in the film. Um, but yeah, so uh, hopefully they'll have more of a bond in the next film, Goose and uh, you know Carol Danvers, because I like Goose and I think that was fun. Um, but yeah, towards the end, she gets power of flight. She's basically Superman, but with laser beams. Not really lasers, but this photon, few photon powers. Uh, so I loved it. I loved it when she was, you know, basically taking on an entire fucking fleet. I would have gone oh, yeah, crazy if Superman did that. And I was going crazy when she was doing that. She, you could see her smiling, having a good time, uh, being cocky about it. She basically, you know... He's like, I'm going to kick your ass towards Ronan. Ronan shows up with a big fleet. Because I'm like, okay, please give her some kind of threat. Yes, I thought they were going to And a go whole army shows fight up. Fight a bit. And right. he's like, all right, she's too powerful. Exactly. I was like, something's going to happen. Well, they like, said they're going to come back for the weapon. They're like, for the no, Tesseract? No, like, no, for the woman. Her. Yeah. Well, so, woman. But, but they, were, they were little bitches. And they were like, 
<laughs> and they fucking ran away. So uh, I can't wait. And, and I don't mean this in a mean way, but I can't wait to see Thanos kick her fucking ass. Because I need that yeah, threat. I need that tension back. That's why you back. go to the movies. It's like, oh, what's going to happen? Yeah. Yes. You're like at the edge of your seat. Yes. And, yeah. It's going to be epic. Um, okay. Anything else that we could talk about in spoilers? Uh, her team, you know, you. I always thought, man, wh- why are all these bad guys on our team? Now it completely makes sense because they are bad guys and they still are bad guys. Ronan, uh, the, the guy who's like Star-Lord who? You know, that guy. <laughs> the, other one. the other ones are pretty generic. The sniper yeah. chick was kind of cool, but she didn't really have much to do. So, yeah. Jude Law, we called it. I, I think I pointed out, I was like, Jude Law's going to be the bad guy. And, and one of our trailer reactions, it was just the eye. way he was walking and the way he looked. I like, you just gave that shit away. The movie was very predictable in that sense, other than the skull, scroll uh, reveal that that didn't really happen. So, mm-hmm. yeah. All right. Well, I think we pretty much covered it, covered everything, yeah? Yeah. yeah I I, I so. hope that in the future, um, you know, Bree chooses her words more carefully because I think it was kind of blown out of proportion. And, you know, what? I know there's a lot of YouTube <laughs> channels out there that made some 10, 15 videos on this topic, made a lot of money off it. But I think it was all to do about nothing. Or, you know, maybe, you know, she learned a, a lesson or a, a valuable thing to put her words a little more carefully and really focus on, you know, encouraging diversity, more people joining the industry rather than, you know, saying advocating, you know, that people aren't included in it. So we'll see. Or, or white men, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at you. <laughs> he doesn't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not on Twitter. I don't he care. Doesn't yeah. give I, a I tweet at nobody. Hey, you're not, you're on Twitter. Grid. You're not on YouTube. He's off the grid. Well, now you're on, now you're on YouTube. So yeah, but you got to get a hold of me. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you all so much for watching, and we will see you on the next Angry Joe show. Bye, guys. And make sure you buy merch and subscribe. Oh, shit. That's right. Subscribe to the channel. Click that link below. Support us. Grab one of them shirts. Oh, it's oh beautiful. yeah. It's a nice one. And nice we are, we're getting a new one, a new design here soon. Uh, we'll make a video on that. And thank you so much for supporting us and watching. Bye, guys. <laughs>